names of the hypothetical trades at quarterback. Now, look, we've heard uh, the uh, Kirk Cousins, with Jacoby Brissett, Carson Wentz's of the world, Nick Foles of the world, uh, Jameis Winston's of the world. Let's dive into that because I know Mike, Mikey didn't really get into it. Let's dive into each one of these. We we we're we gonna put these clips up on the internet as well. What, I, I, if you rank them, let, let's rank them from least likely, least likely. Let's rank. Let, let's get five names to them. We're gonna get five names from least likely to the most likely, right? Okay. And I'll start off at five. This guy I would love to have. Okay. Um, at five, I, I I would love to have Jameis Winston. I, I I like I like Jameis Winston, and the reason I would put him at, at Jameis Winston at five is because he can really throw the football. Jameis Winston has starting quarterback attributes from the mobility, from the arm, from you know just being able to just just sling the ball and make every single throw. The problem with Jameis Winston is he gets into those ruts where he can give you three in a minute. He can give he can give you two turnovers, like he give you two picks. But the thing is, when you if you drop him back for that third time, he has irrational confidence in his game because he he thinks that he's gonna throw it back and throw a touchdown. So he also is more expensive. I think they gave him a really nice contract to be a backup um, there in New Orleans. So the money don't really match, and I think he's the most expensive out of the guys uh, at five. So uh, Jameis Winston, I'd love to have him if it was a wish list to get, to get the Browns back on track. Uh, well, who do you got at five coming up, Earl? Oh man, I, I'm gonna go Jameis with, with you, man. Like, uh, so I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, I don't, honestly, I really don't even know if I got five guys in mind. You, you, you ain't even got here. Like, man, I don't even like five dudes, man. I mean, that, I think I got four. Jameis, you got one of the four. We playing well. When you go to your four, I get I gave you five. Go to oh, your okay, four, and then okay, I do my okay, four. Okay, all right, let me see. It's not like we playing spades. <laughs> I got three in a possible. What you got? Uh, let me see at five. If I had to pick somebody at five, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Colt, they got Colt McCoy. At, at five, at five, Brian Hoyer. Five, at five, I would go Colt McCoy, right? I just know that when Colt McCoy got his spot starts when he was a backup quarterback with Arizona, not sure what the win loss was, but every time I would tune in, like the numbers would look good. You know what I'm saying? He was capable, right. uh, capable of moving the offense and putting some points on the uh, board for his team. A savvy veteran, man. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for him and his shoulder or elbow, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, you know, tell her how his career could have ended up. Um, but I would go Colt McCoy at five, just on the strength. Uh, I really ain't got nobody else. Um, That's know, how bad uh, it is. That ain't that crazy? Man, my man Daryl said it. A couple people have been saying Brian Hoyer. Man, Brian Hoyer looked. Bad. Oh, he looked horrible last last, he last game. Bad. He looked bad yesterday. I don't. I don't know about Hoyer. No. I don't know about that. So, like, I now see McCoy is trash too. Listen, this is number five. I told y'all I have four. I really don't want Hoyer or McCoy. <laughs> but you just have, he's, he's, like, he's, but for the sake of this content, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to paint the picture for somebody. Like, so he's <laughs> like, like, yo, I, G Bush should have said three. He gonna get five. I'm like, yeah, cover like, these bums. These five. What? Yeah. Um, um, let's let, let, let's just hop, skip, and jump to four. I would go at number four. Give me Nick Foles. I'll take Foles. He didn't already won a Super Bowl. Um, he it was played the best best games of his life after Carson Wentz got hurt. Um, uh, in some spot duty, he looked terrible after that. But here's the thing. Um, I know that he's going to not make certain mistakes. I know that he can make certain throws, and I just feel like he has a little more capability. In terms of natural ability, now he's older than PJ Walker, and he, you know, he's even a little longer than two. But I, I would feel more comfortable with Foles, uh, and coming in at number four. All right, so for me at number four is actually Jameis Winston. For the, I mean, this dude, the the he's a walking turnover, but he's a walking big play threat at the same time. Yeah, my man got 139 career touchdowns against 97 career interceptions. His last four seasons as a starter, he had 33 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. I think he got five years as a starter under his belt and then played in at least four games or at least three games for uh, the Saints, you know, every year that he's been there. Um, you don't find too many backup quarterbacks with that much starting experience. And so this would be one of those situations that I said with Jacoby Brissett last year. I think you can hand the keys over to Jameis Winston 
and keep this uh, playbook simple enough to where he don't have to crash the car. I think he has the arm to be able to make certain throws. Just don't kind of get it to where you asking him to get too cute because Jameis will lose his damn mind and just get to try <laughs> stuff Bro. that we don't need him to be trying. Bro, like, so what if you, you can doing? keep it real simple and, and just don't crash the whip, that would be cool. I'll put Jameis Winston at four. Hey, listen, let, let's get to number three. Um, I'm going to go. Now, this guy for me would be number one if if all things was equal, but I just don't think it's, it's very likely to happen. I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. Uh, I said Kirk Cousins, if you can get him, um, it'll be $6 million or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are not going anywhere. Uh, Justin Jefferson is out for a long extended period of time. And you're just looking at this team and you're like, well, you know, you've already got rid of Dalvin Cook. You, you, you need to probably just re reshuffle the dice. They, Zadarius Smith and Tomlinson, they got rid of them. Those guys are already over here playing for the Vikings. And I think just, just the way Kirk Cousins is, I think Kirk Cousins would come here and would be a, a, a super duper upgrade from what we got. Um, he could make some certain throws. The, the knock on him is, is what's going on in the playoffs. But for us, it's, just, it's about getting to the playoffs. We'll worry about the playoffs when the playoffs come. It's about getting there for us. Who's your number three? Uh, my number three would be Josh Dobbs. Uh, if I'm being totally honest, people won't like this. I think Josh Dobbs is probably the most realistic option that we didn't discuss so far. Uh, reason being, <coughs> Kyler Murray is back. Kyler Murray, you know, I hate talking about contracts, but the truth is Kyler Murray, he has a healthy contract. But, and yeah. usually those dudes, when it's time for them to play, they will play. Um, we all know what the situation is in Arizona. Even if they don't win games with Kyler Murray, they cool with that too. Especially if you look at this upcoming draft with the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, it's a stacked draft class that's coming out. Josh Dobbs knows the offense already. Um, it can be a situation kind of like what you have with the Jets and the Chiefs. You know, uh, Miko Harmon was a member of the Chiefs, signed in the offseason with the Jets. Uh, things didn't work out the way he thought it would. He ended up getting traded back to the Chiefs. Uh, Josh Dobbs has uh, started a few games, looked pretty decent. He knows the offense. I think he's the most realistic. I got him at three just because I don't think he's on the same level of player with my number two and number one guy. Uh, listen, I, I, you know, at number two, I'm going to go. And this was tough for me. This is tough. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. I know Carson Wentz is he's on everybody's do not touch list. He throws some interceptions sometimes. You know, but for me, uh, he just has a, a better body of work, better, you know, better athlete, better pedigree than P.J. Walker. He can make more throws. He can do those things. And I think Coach Stefanski may be able to coach him out of that. If you talk about, uh, you know, Baker Mayfield and some of the other guys, if you tell me you can get that out of Jacoby Brissett, what could he do with a guy like Carson Wentz? I just think – and people lying to themselves if they don't see that. Like, if you said P.J. Walker is going into Seattle, how was the percent chance they're going to win? Or Carson Wentz with some two religions and pieces and parts is going into Seattle to get a win. I feel more comfortable by saying Carson Wentz. Now, is that more name brand recognition? Probably. But I'm going to say, listen, that he was drafted number two for a reason. I need to figure out what if we can get that that some level of that. And I'll have him at two. Who you got at two, Earl? Uh, at two for me is actually Jacoby Brissett. Uh, Jacoby Brissett was here last year. Again, another dude who know the system. Um, a dude that, you know, played the best ball of his NFL career with the Cleveland Browns under Kevin Stefanski. Um, he, he's definitely beloved in the locker room. You could just see, you know, how like the energy was around him when they came here in preseason after the game with his interaction with his former teammates. Um, he's the, you know, you know, the most recent uh, starter over what, four or five games for the Cleveland Browns. So, he pretty ha he has a full grasp on, on on exactly what's going on. At me for number two would be Jacoby Brissett. Well, listen, uh, Jacoby Brissett at two. Um, at one, I got to just go ahead and take what you said at two. Give me, give me Jacoby Brissett. Um, first and foremost, he's loved in the locker room. Second of all, he already knows the playbook. He already knows what Stefanski wants to run. Stefanski, all he has to do is watch film on last year and see what's going on. Love it, love it, love it. You see what happened when you brought back Kareem Hunt, paid dividends, two touchdowns. He's been getting stronger every single week. Jacoby Brissett knows how to get rid of the ball. Amari Cooper has some. Think about it, though. Think about it, Earl. J Jacoby Brissett has 
all of the all of the other chemistry with DPJ has some of the same stuff with Njoku, Mark Cooper. He knows those guys. The linemen know where he wants to set up, and it's a no brainer. It'll cost you about one point five million dollars or whatever the, whatever the case may be. The, the the Washington Commanders are trash. They're not getting any better. Why would they want to spend that money on him? Bring him on back in here, and they should have been doing this. And 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 if you thought Deshaun Watson needed a backup before. You know Jacoby Brissett is not threatening, right? He they he passed the baton. Jacoby Brissett should be the all time court, backup quarterback as long as Deshaun Watson is here. Just go ahead and make the move. Make the move. You know, I got him at number one. But uh, before I give you my number one, to add on to your point, man, if you even think back to last year, uh, David Njoku and Donovan Peoples Jones both had career year, years in, in terms of yardage. Um, most of that was with you know Jacoby Brissett under center. Uh, for me, at number one, man, it's Kirk Cousins. Um, he's number one in me because out of the five quarterbacks I named, he's the best of the group. Um, it's probably unlikely, but, you know, anything is possible for real. This season alone, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions, over 1,600 mm. passing the ball. Uh, Minnesota took a, a major step in the wrong direction, uh, and it cost us around $6 million. Not only is he the best of the group, when you talk about this team having Super Bowl aspirations, out of the five guys on my list, he has the highest probability of leading the Browns to a Super Bowl. I think my list is constructed the way they is with Colt McCoy and Winston at the bottom. That's just honestly list fillers. Um, but those dudes really don't know the system. Yep. Three through one, they know the system. Dobbs, uh, Brissett, and, uh, and Cousins mm -hmm. they know the system. And so that was just me ranking them in order of talent. Um, so, yeah, that would be my list, five through one. Uh, let's get to some super chats before we get to our last break. Do it for Chubb says get Cooper rush them. Other dudes is not it. Uh, let's get to another super chat here. Uh, Nick H. We appreciate your super chat, my man. What's wrong with bringing in Kaepernick for a workout? We talked about this earlier. I don't have him, no problem bringing in Kaepernick for no workout. Here's the problem. We talked about Deshaun Watson not being used to the speed of the game. and He was out, what, a year and a half, two? Kaepernick been out, what, six, seven? This. I just talked to a friend of mine about this. Um, huge fan of Colin Kaepernick. And, you know, everything I'm saying has got to do with the football context of it all. Right. What you just alluded to. We having a hard time getting Deshaun Watson up and rolling at 28 years old who's been out of football, what, two years. I can only imagine what a 30 – I think me and Colin Kaepernick might be around the same age. 32. Like, yeah, like I'm, I, I'm maybe I'm Speed. a couple years older than him. But at the end of the day, you've been out the game so long that – the style of play, uh, the speed in the game, you know, like a lot that has changed, but a lot hasn't. You just too far removed from the game to, you know, for that to be the case. So, like, I think people only want Colin Kaepernick to get a tryout because of it being a feel good story because he was blackballed. Yeah, uh, he he got they they, they, they did they did that, that's what it that's what it was, and I understand that those things is accurate, man, but. This ain't really the situation for a feel good story. We're trying to go uh win the Super Bowl. So totally agree. Vernell Jackson said, I need to know G. Bush and Earl with this defense. You think that TB12 would consider it? One title in Cleveland is worth all those in New England. We, we well listen, if you saw Tom Brady a couple years ago, you gotta think about it. Tom Brady, they won that championship on defense, the one that you won it. Yeah, you look back a couple years ago. And he was just not – I mean, we beat Tom Brady when he was here, right? Yeah. I mean, we beat him last year like with a backup quarterback. Jacoby Brissett beat him. Uh, they missed a lot of throws, and they got better receivers than we got, better weapons, um, better left tackle. No, nah, he's not doing that. People, He's not going to come out the, out the game for that. Tom, yeah, Tom he, 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 cool. he cool. He's straight. He, he okay. He ain't doing much. Uh, DJ Brobot. <laughs> <laughs> What a name. Get Matty Ice point blank period. Now, Matty Ice looked shot the last time we played. He played too. Matty Ice was out there looking like a slushy. He was not all ice cubes. Like he was looking, uh, and he about 40. I think Matty Ice about 40 years old, man. And then uh, Deion Flores, how about Drew Locke? Oh, that's a young, see, that's another thing. It's a, it, he's a young guy. Drew Locke is a young guy with a young name, but then it like the reason we want a veteran is because we want them not to be fooled on certain things. Like if you got a medium guy, he still got young guy tendencies. He could be fooled. Put it to you like this. If I get another divorce, I'm 42 years old. They'd be like, hey, 
You got a dating profile in. Do you want to cut off any ages you won't talk to? Yeah, I'm not I'm not talking to nobody over 50 because I can't deal with you eight years older than me. And we get old. I'm like, man, you age bad. And then the second one, I'm hey, in the second one, I'm not dealing with no little kids neither. Uh, you uh, nothing under 30, bro. Nothing. You got to low key be 35. I can't do you can't be taught. I'm bored. What are we doing? Nothing. We're hey, not hey, doing nothing. This is the part about Locke, though. Like, I, I mean, I could argue, you know, I, the only pushback I would give you on that, I think Drew Locke and uh, um, Dobbs, as far as, like, experience, Locke might actually have more ex experience as a starter than he do. So. Oh, he do? Yeah. So, but like, I do. mean, to, to me, it's, it, it's, it's pick your poison with either one of them. I think Dobbs is the most realistic option. That's not the dude that I necessarily would want. Um, if they somehow got Kirk Cousins, cool. But you know, it, it, I, it, listen, they get Kirk Cousins. I'm I'm head over heels, head over heels. Yeah, I, you, listen, it's a whole new lease on life. But if you if you make that move to go get Kirk Cousins, like, what are you saying for the rest <laughs> of the Sean Watson season? <laughs> that's, are you that's, putting because you know if you watch the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show today. Uh, you know, McNuggets queued up something that I guess Jay talked to a friend of his that's a doctor. And according to the information that was released, you know, typically this is something that requires a surgery, even though Deshaun Watson said he's not going to get surgery. You know, now I suggested a short term IR, but, you know, if you go make a move like Kirk Cousins, yeah, we might be talking, okay, like that can help us get a Super Bowl. But then, like, what are you doing with Deshaun Watson for the rest of the year? That would be another part of it. Let's get one more. In, well, one more in here. Uh, do it for Chubb says we appreciate your super chat, my man. Uh, man, coach up PJ. The mother dude's not saving the team. And what we gonna do? Uh, give up picks for a backup. PJ need all the reps with DW on IR. If if they give him all the reps, like it's like think about it like in Madden. Like you put somebody in a Madden, you want them to progress. Even if we we put him in the preseason games, let him play all games. At the end of the year, he gonna go up minus two. <laughs> PJ Walker is not going up no progressions, bro. Like, I don't think he's gonna get arm strength and moxie. I just don't do I would rather play DTR over PJ Walker if they said it was the rest of the season. I would just have to go with the, the learning, your growing pains. I really um, ain't worried about giving up picks, to be totally honest with you. Like, I think like you know, picks and salary cap. I ain't saying those things don't matter and those things not important, but sometimes like we're over we overblow it. Like you can't make moves to get picks back. Or you can't yeah. make moves to adjust the salary cap. So when I look at this team right now, man, I think you got to kind of stay more like an immediate future than a long distance future. And if you can trade a few picks to help you in your immediate future, then you got to do what you got to do. We in season now. So you can't worry about what's going to happen in April. 